Thank you, Christina. <clears throat> so let's start with the song lyrics from a well-known Canadian band. And I expect most of you in this audience to know these lyrics. Man science, math science history, unraveling the mystery. It all started with a bit, big bang. Now, while that might give you a clue of where we are today, but really in the beginning, there was only one discipline of science. As we started to understand the problems, we realized that these problems were hard. And breaking them down into smaller disciplines help in systematically thinking about these problems and making some progress. Science started to diverge. So science diverged into physics, chemistry, biology, mathematics. Biology diverged into botany, zoology. We learned that tomato was a fruit. And we also learned that sea corals, while they look like plants, are actually animals. When we started solving some of these problems, we realized that there were other problems. Harder, more complex problems. Wicked problems. And dividing them into smaller disciplines made for systematically thinking about these problems and making some progress. Science started to diverge. Sorry, it started to converge. We learned that tomato was a fruit, but example, knowing that tomato is a fruit is knowledge, but knowing not to put it in a fruit salad is indeed wisdom. Right? Conversion of sciences not, is not just taking learning from other sciences and putting it together, but convergence pushes us to take the knowledge from all the scientific disciplines and use our collective wisdom to make some progress and, and um, convergence happens when the whole becomes greater than the sum of its parts. Cell phones are a great example of convergence. We took radio frequency we have for communication. We took gyroscopes, cameras, data storage, and you know it, name it. It was convergence that allows us to put the man on the moon in 1969. So, what does convergence have to do with understanding life on Earth? When it comes to life on Earth, DNA, or deoxyribonucleic acid, is the most basic unit of life. DNA encodes all the traits. DNA encodes our height, our eye color, the way we respond to a disease. And while DNA in all organisms is different, all DNA is made of four nitrogen-based molecules, A, T, and C, and G for short. So if all DNA is made of these four molecules, how are organisms different? Well, it turns out that it's the sequence or the order in which these four molecules come together define our traits and define us who we are. The field of science that uh, studies genetics, uh, DNA is called genetics, gen meaning the beginning. So by definition, genetics is the study of studying DNA, studying the variations within that DNA, and understanding how these uh, changes may or may not be transferred to the next generation. Convergence of science also helped us put the pieces of puzzle together to understand and define a human genome. The Human Genome Project started in 2000, uh, 1996 and ended in 2003. And we were able to do that by taking learning from chemistry and how to replicate DNA in a fast and accurate manner, creating an environment where we can do the replication in a box, then adding some fancy cameras, some nice lasers to capture the data, 
and then use computer science to make sense of that data, analyze the data, organize the data. As I said, the Human Genome Project, it took 13 years to complete and cost $1 billion. 99% of the human genome was completed in that period. And while this was a huge task, it was not easy. It was not easy because just the amount of DNA to sequence is a lot. So if you take DNA from one human cell and stretch it out, it'd be about six feet or two meters long. If you took DNA from human body in all cells of a human body, it will stretch to the sun and back over 70 times. And of course, there's also the challenge of repetitive DNA. Imagine trying to solve a complex puzzle with a lot of similar or same pieces. And it required a lot of dedicated people over a long period of time. It wasn't until earlier this year when scientists published a full gapless genome of uh, humans. So these advances in science help us get to a point where the science of genomics started. Genomics is essentially genetics at large scale. So today, we are able to study genomes of hundreds of thousands of people, comparing their genomes, and looking for that needle in a haystack, that variation, that difference, that may be associated with a disease. Today, we know there are about 3.2 billion bases in a human genome. There are about 20,000 genes, protein-coding genes, in a human genome. That number keeps changing based on what scientists think and what they discuss. There is about 10,000 variations that we know today that are associated with disease. And it's the variation within those genes, the 20,000 or so genes, that actually is responsive for, for disease. We know 10,000 of them. I'm sure if I'm speaking to you six months or a year later, that number will be different. Knowing the variations within a human genome greatly help in understanding disease most of the time, even before it manifests, manifests itself. So the best example I, for, of the power of genomic data I can give you is in the past two years in the pandemic. We realized earlier on in the pandemic that people responded differently to the disease. Some people got really, really ill, ended up in ICUs, and was fatal for them. Other had mild symptoms. Other had no symptoms. There's a group of people that scientists have dubbed as resistors. And these are people who, even when exposed to the disease, they do not contract the disease. We realized that the human genome had a role to play in how humans react to the disease. So we embarked on a project called HOSEEK. It was a $20 million project, included sequencing genomes of 10,000 Canadians affected by SARS-CoV-2, analyzing the data, and trying to figure out if there are any genomic variations or signatures that respond, correspond to the disease. As, just as SARS and MERS, COVID was followed SARS and MERS, there'll be other pandemic diseases. And the knowledge from HOSI, this project, will help us understand and manage future pandemics. Now, big genomic data is also making difference in our lives, in other places in our lives. In agriculture, for example, genomics help in accelerate the breeding process that has been around for tens of thousands of years. Reading of the genome also help us in looking at traits or selecting traits that are beneficial in plants and animals. In drug discovery, human genome sequence allows for drug targets to manage disease. Also, information on the human genome can give us clues in how a person might respond to a specific drug, giving the rise to the field of pharmaco pharmacogenomics. In prenatal testing, we can test Variations within an unborn child by non-invasive methods, by using a small 
uh, portion of the uh, pregnant mother's blood. And if you are a film or drama enthusiast, you will appreciate the role of forensic sciences in, in crime. Film and drama crews these days will often uh, employ people to uh, genetic experts to give advice on this. So side note, if you're a biology major and questioning your choices in life, fret not, you can still have a career in Hollywood. <laughs> and of course, we saw the impact of uh, genome sequencing in uh, looking at or monitoring SARS-CoV-2 virus in the last two years. The sequencing information also helped us understand this, the, the, the areas that were targeted by the SARS-CoV-2 vaccine. Now, one very exciting area to me um, is the science of artificial intelligence. I think what artificial intelligence has the potential to do is take the data we produce for genomics and put it on steroids. I think intelligence, artificial intelligence has the capability to advance and accelerate the impact of genomics in the near future. Something to look out for. Now, that's all well and good, but what's next? What are our challenges? What do we need to look out for? Well, the technologies that are helping us with genomic studies are really, really advanced. And we need to constantly update these technologies to make sure that we stay current with everything that's happening. Of course, to stay current, we need people, smart people, to help us advance these technologies. We need biologists, we need chemists, we need engineers, physicists. One other thing that the pandemic has really highlighted is the policies governing the use of genomic data. We've realized that there's a lot of red tape that comes in the way of the real impact of genomic data. But on the other hand, there's also needs new policies and how do we protect the privacy of the people involved. And of course, last but not least, public uptake, public understanding. We need, to, we need to, to do a lot of work in making the common man on the street understand what genomics can do for them, but more importantly, what genomics cannot do for them. We live in an era where genomics is suddenly, certainly going to make a difference in, on, to our lives. But for genomics to make a difference, and make an impact, we need, all need to work together to make sure that we speak to each other in a language that we all understand. Because the formation of ideas cannot happen without the use of language. And I'll leave you with this thought, that convergence will allow us to digitize genomic data that will in turn help us understand the world around us and make a difference to the way we live our lives. Thank you very much.